Hi, today I would like to share with you a slide on yoga. Before introducing this subject, I would like to give you a glimpse of what Ayush stands for. The acronym Ayush stands for Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. Yoga comes as part of the Ayush streams of medicine which has been practiced from time immemorial in the case of India. So, we, we are presenting here on yoga at a glance prepared by Ms. K. Neha. She is treasurer Uttarakhand state chapter of National Association of Palliative Care for Ayush and Integrative Medicine. The eight limbs of yoga, yama that stands for restraints, niyama that stands for observances, asana stands for postures, pranayama stands for breath control, pratyahara withdrawal of the senses, dharana concentration, dhyana meditation and samadhi poor contemplation. These are the eight limbs of yoga. This is a very extensive diagrammatic representation of the yoga, nyaya, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana and samadhi. This is the development of positive personal aptitudes and psychological level, sensory level, mental level, mental level, unconscious and conscious level, spiritual level. So, moral codes, these are all explained in a vivid manner in this diagrammatic representation. The yamas, which means restraints, ahimsa is one of the yamas that is stands for non-violence, satya stands for truthfulness, asteya stands for non-stealing, abarigraha stands for non-coveting, brahmacharya stands for celibacy, yama or restraints. The yamas are five ethical percepts that outline a code of contact that should be observed when interacting with the world around us. They offer guidance on how to act towards others. They are Ahimsa stands for non-violence. Ahimsa probably had a very straightforward meaning to the original audience of the Yoga Sutras and is interdiction against violence. Ahimsa is one that is unfortunately still very relevant today. In addition, some contemporary yogis interpret Ahimsa as a directive towards a vegetative vegan diet on the basis that all living beings are entitled to be treated with kindness and non-violence. Satya stands for truthfulness. Telling the truth is a moral baseline we can probably all get behind and it is certainly one that is not outdated. In fact, in the age of institutionalized lying, when alternative facts are condoned in the most public sectors of society, it is more important than ever to speak the truth and support others who do so. Asteya, non-stealing. In Padanjali's days, this was undoubtedly primarily an injunction against taking someone else's property. While that continues to be good advice, not to mention the law, there are now so many more ways to steal, some of which may not be as obvious. Intellectual property, logos, pictures from the internet, whatever it is that does not belong to you, leave it be. Originality is certainly a good choice for the modern yogi wishing to practice asteya. Brahmacharya which stands for celibacy. Brahmacharya is probably the yama that requires the most massaging to fit into a contemporary yogi's lifestyle. Yes, it is highly likely that the original intent was a total prohibition on sexual activity. Yoga certainly would not be the first school of thought 
to promote celibacy for its practitioners. Does that mean that is how we have to practice it today? Fidelity, constancy and having honest open relationships with our partners work as alternatives for today's yogi householders. Abarigraha, non-coveting. Now, here is one that unfortunately really stands the test of time. No modern filter necessary, coveting what other people have, jealousy, envy and greed are all words for the green eyed monster that has apparently been with us since the beginning. It is a tough one to get past. One thing that can help is to name the sensation when it arises so that we are aware that it is happening and are then able to realize that we do not have to become attached to it. The Niyamas or the observances, Swathyaya, study, Sauchya, purification, Sandosha, contentment, Tapas, asceticism, Ishwara Pranithana, dedication to God or Master. Niyama, observances, if the Yamas are outward looking towards society, then the Niyamas are inward practices to improve the self that is saucha. Purification of the body and mind are specified in the yoga sutras as a necessary step in detaching from the physical world in preparation for meditation. For us this might mean identifying and releasing thought patterns that have the ability to distract us from our purposes. If we can clear away thoughts that dwell on negativity or meanness toward ourselves or others, then there is less clutter up there when it comes time for inner focus. Santosha, contentment is a real challenge for many people. So, it is well worth examining why it is so damn hard to be feel happy with ourselves. The culture of always wanting more of status of constant striving to outdo is so pervasive that it actually takes a bit of effort to realize that it is not compulsory. Existing in a state of constant dissatisfaction and comparison is in the only way. A practice of expressing gratitude can help us feel better about the good things we do already have in our lives. Tabas or asceticism. One of the translations of Tabas is heat, so it is often interpreted as encouraging practices that stalk our inner fire. Miller explains that asceticism was though to produce the heat of tapas. Purification through self-discipline is described in Padanjali's work. In contemporary yoga, tapas might be observed through the daily practice of postures or meditation which requires self-control to maintain. Swathyaya or study. Swathyaya is sometimes translated as self-study which implies that it means introspection. However, that does not seem to be the original intent. Rather, it meant the study, memorization and repetition of sacred prayers and mantras which was and continues to be a common practice in Hinduism. In modern times, we may choose to interpret this as an exhortation to be diligent students of the world whether through formal or personal education. Ishwara Pranidhana, dedication to God or master. This can be a tricky one since many modern practitioners bridle at the suggestion that God is a prescribed part of our practice. It is interesting to note that the meaning of Ishwara in the original text is also open to interpretation. It could have meant a master, a teacher or an unspecified God. Submission to a teacher is in line with the guru-student relationship that was an established tradition within yoga in India. However, surrender to a guru does not sit that well with many western students. For our purposes, we can perhaps think of it as a necessity to acknowledge that yoga is a spiritual practice. It affects the whole person whose constituent parts are mind, body and spirit. Asana or posture, 
while it might seem like we are getting on to more familiar ground here, asana also had a very different meaning in its original context. While we now use this term to refer to any part of a postural practice or yoga poses, its original meaning was simply a comfortable seat. Padanjali's work has no other asana instruction other than the necessity of finding a posture in which to engage in the practices of pranayama and meditation. In terms of the eight limbed path, it seems that once we have established that we are right with the world and with ourselves, we can turn our attention to the business of calming and focusing the mind. Of course, asana is now quite often the point of entry for people in the yoga. Pranayama or breath control. On the subject of breath control, Padanjali instructs that the practitioner should regulate inhalations, exhalations and retentions of the breath in a cyclical manner. All other breathing exercises we now practice came from sources outside of the Yoga Sutras. Since the eight limbs are concerned with preparing for meditation, any breath that is centering and brings us in contact with the present moment that helps ready the body and mind to turn the focus inward. Pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses. Isolating consciousness from the distractions offered by engagement with the senses is the final physical preparation for the meditation practices outlined in the final three limbs. This can be in itself a form of what we could call mindfulness in which Sensory input such as sounds, sights or smells are noticed as external and then allowed to pass without capturing our attention. Dharana, concentration. Dharana is the first stage in the inner journey toward freedom from suffering. During this type of meditation, practitioners concentrate all of their attention on a single point of focus such as the navel or on an image in their mind. Dhyana, meditation. In this stage, the practitioner meditates on a single object of their attention to the exclusion of all others. While we are accustomed to a type of meditation that attempts to clear the mind of all thoughts and images, this does not seem to have been a requisite part of the method prescribed by Padanjali. As long as the attention is focused, the object is not specified. Samadhi, pure contemplation. When dhyana is achieved, the practitioners endeavor a state of samadhi in which they merge with the object of their meditation. Although this has been interpreted to mean union with the divine or with the entire universe, Padanjali's explanation does not go this far. Pravriti or trait building blocks. Correct knowledge or pramana, incorrect knowledge, vibhariyaya, imagination or fantasy, vigalpa, sleep, nidra, memory, smriti. We all are subject to these five turnings in our minds. Correct knowledge can help us do the right thing at the right time, but we can also do the right thing for the wrong reason. Even incorrect knowledge can be helpful at times. The truth is these fluctuations can be good or bad, even right knowledge can be used in a harmful way. We have often seen things done with the best of intentions turn out drastically wrong. It is not that these rutis are good or bad that makes them worthy of study, it is their effect upon the state of our mind that is of interest. These turnings of the mind obscure the view of a real self and need to be calmed. Like the surface of a mountain, lake on a clear moonlit night or mind, when still reflects perfectly the full moon that is reality. But with even a small ripple caused by a vritti, the moon's appearance is distorted. Different types of yoga branched internationally. Vinyasa yoga. Vinyasa means to place in a special way and in this case yoga postures 
Vinyasa yoga is the often considered the most athletic yoga style. Vinyasa was adopted from Ashtanga yoga in the 1980s. Many types of yoga can also be considered vinyasa flows such as Ashtanga, power yoga and prana. In vinyasa classes, the movement is coordinated with your breath and movement to flow from one pose to another. Vinyasa styles can vary depending on the teacher and there can be many types of poses in different sequences. Hatha yoga. The Sanskrit term Hatha is an umbrella term for all physical postures of yoga. In the West, Hatha yoga simply refers to all the other styles of yoga that is Ashtanga, Iyengar, etc. that are grounded in a physical practice. However, there are other branches of yoga such as Kriya, Raja and Karma yoga that are separate from the physical based yoga practice. The physical based yoga is the most popular and has numerous styles. Hatha yoga, the Sanskrit term Hatha is an umbrella term for all physical postures of yoga. In the West, Hatha yoga simply refers to all the other styles of yoga that are grounded in a physical practice. However, there are other branches of yoga such as Kriya, Raj, Raja and Karma yoga that are separate from the physical based yoga practice. The physical based yoga is the most popular and has numerous styles. Hatha yoga classes are best for beginners since they are usually placed slower than other yoga styles. Hatha classes today are called classic approach to breathing and exercises. If you are brand new to yoga, Hatha yoga is a great entry point to the practice. Ayengar yoga. Ayengar yoga was founded by BKS Ayengar and focuses on alignment as well as detailed and precise movements. In an Ayengar class, students perform a variety of postures while controlling the breath. Generally, poses are held for a long time while adjusting the minuity of the pose. Ayengar relies heavily on props to help students perfect their form and go deeper into poses in a safe manner. Although you will not jump around, you will definitely get a workout and feel incredibly open and relaxed after an Iyengar class. This style is really great for people with injuries who need to work slowly and methodologically. Kundalini Yoga Kundalini Yoga practice is, a, is equal part spiritual and physical. This style is all about releasing the Kundalini energy in your body said to be trapped or coiled in the lower spine. These classes really work your core and breathing with fast moving, invigorating postures and breath exercises. These classes are pretty intense and can involve chanting, mantra and meditation. Ashtanga Yoga In Sanskrit, Ashtanga is translated as eight limb path. In Mysore, India, people gather to practice this form of yoga together at their own pace. If you see Mysore led Ashtanga, it is expected of you to know the series. Vinyasa yoga stems from Ashtanga as the flowing style linking breath to movement. Ashtanga yoga involves a very physically demanding sequence of postures. So, this style of yoga is definitely not for the beginner. It takes an experienced yogi to really love it. Ashtanga starts with five sun salutation A's and five sun salutation B's and then moves into a series of standing and floor postures. Bikram Yoga Bikram Yoga is named after Bikram Choudhury and features a sequence of set poses in a sauna like room typically set to 105 degrees and 40 degrees humidity. Choudhury faced sexual assault and harassment lawsuits in the US and fled to Mexico in 2017. Many studios that were formerly Bikram now practice hot yoga in an effort to disassociate with the founder. The sequence is includes a series of 26 basic postures with each one performed twice. Many of these poses 
are focused on proper alignment. In, if you are interested in yoga with the heat turned up, look for studios that offer hot yoga classes. Yin yoga. Yin yoga is a slow paced style of yoga with seated postures that are held for longer periods of time. Yin can also be a meditative yoga practice that helps you find inner peace. Yin is a great class for beginners as postures can be held for from 45 seconds to 2 minutes. The classes are relaxed as you are supposed to let gravity do most of the work. Restorative Yoga Restorative Yoga focuses on winding down after a long day and relaxing your mind. At its core, this style focuses on body relaxation. Restorative Yoga also helps to cleanse and free your mind. You spend more time in fewer postures throughout the class. Many of the poses are modified to be easier and more relaxing. Like Iyengar, many props are used and are placed just right such as blankets, bolsters and eye pillows. All of the props are there to help you sink deeper into relaxation. Prenatal Yoga Prenatal Yoga is carefully adapted for moms to be and is tailored to women in all trimesters. Many have said that prenatal is one of the best types of exercises for expectant moms because of the pelvic floor work, focus on breathing and bonding with the growing baby. Prenatal yoga also helps mothers prepare for labor and delivery. During this practice, you will use props in order to modify your poses and ensure stability. In this class, its way more about stability than flexibility. Anusara Yoga Anusara is a modern day version of Hatha Yoga, most similar to Vinyasa in that it focuses on alignment, but with more focus on the mind-body-heart connection. It was founded by John Friend who created a unique system called the Universal Principles of Alignment. He resigned in 2002 after accusations of sexual misconduct and financial mismanagement. Friend has since partnered with Deshi and Mikaj Springer to teach the bowspring method. Anushara focuses on spirals and how each body part should be moving and it is also known for its emphasis on heart opening. Jiva Mukti Yoga Jiva Mukti was founded in 1984 by Sharon Gannon and David Live. Jiva Mukti is mainly vinyasa flow style classes infused with Hindu spiritual teachings. At its core, this style emphasizes connection to earth as a living being. So, most Jiva Mukti devotees follow their vegetarian philosophy. A series of chants usually open the beginning of class followed up by a series of poses that align with the five tenets of Jiva Mukti Yoga and philosophy. Thank you. Thank you.